Hello and welcome to the EPRS Chronicles. This is our second and final episode in our two-part series on the rise of India. In this episode, we will look a little more closely at EU-India relations. And joining me once more is Angelos Dilvorias, EPRS expert on India. Hello, Angela. Hello, Kelly. So, let's start with uh, exploring what the relationship between India and the EU has been like so far. Yeah, so India was among the first countries back in 1962 that established diplomatic relations with the European Economic Community, as we used to be called then. Um, and uh, in uh, 1994, uh, there was a cooperation agreement between uh, the EU and India, uh, which evolved into a strategic partnership a decade later, in 2004. In 2007, uh, seeing that the trade between India and the EU was growing, uh, the leaders decided to uh, start the negotiations on a free trade agreement. Uh, however, possibly due to diverging ambitions, possibly due to change of leadership, um, the negotiations stalled uh, and uh, were, were officially in limbo uh, as of 2013. Um, they were relaunched in 2021, uh -huh. uh, uh, following the uh, coming into power of, the, uh, of Prime Minister Modi and uh, his government. Um, and uh, they were accompanied uh, in 2022 about talks about the Trade and Technology Council and uh, in 2023 about the uh, economic corridor that would link uh, India and the EU. Let's uh, talk a little further about that. Can you tell me a little more about the Trade and Technology Council? What is it? What? Yes. Uh, Why does it matter? Yes, yes. Uh, as, as the name implies, its name uh, gives it away. Uh, it's a council, it's a forum on cooperation on trade and technology matters. So the idea is to enhance uh, the uh, strengthen further the ties that we try to strengthen now with the FTA that we have already with uh, with the current partnerships uh, and enhance our cooperation in uh, in trade and technology matters. But those are broad matters. Like for example, technology cooperation can have uh, applications in uh, climate change technology, but also in defense uh, technology. So um, we had a first uh, significant milestone last year, the signature of a Memorandum of Understanding on Semiconductors uh, in October or November last year in this respect. You mentioned the free trade agreement uh, between yes. the EU and India. Can you tell us what the state of play is currently? It is difficult to say. Uh, there is progress in the talks. Uh, there have been seven rounds of negotiation. Um, However, the agreement will not be finalized by 2024, as some had voiced the, the hope back in 2021. Um, of course, uh, we must understand that uh, we're talking about two huge markets, uh, India and the EU. Uh, a free trade agreement is not an easy matter. There are always areas in which uh, talks are going to be held back or negotiations will be more difficult. In this case, possibly sustainability issues, uh, phytosanitary products. Um, but uh, to give an example, trade with uh, New Zealand, the free trade agreement took four years and it was a significantly smaller market in that respect. So uh, we must um, continue our efforts, uh, the, the European Union and India, uh, but we should not say, oh, OK, we should not rush in order to, to achieve it. And eventually, when it uh, comes through, would this free trade agreement between these two large markets, as you put, be a game changer for both the EU and India? It will be very important for both uh, blocs, uh, both because it will increase trade uh, in several sectors. Uh, uh, India and uh, the European Union, as we mentioned earlier, are both huge markets, are very important markets, but also because it is a signal. Uh, it is a signal for India to send to the world that it is entering uh, a free trade agreement with a, a very important region. Uh, and it is also a signal that we, uh, as a European Union, send that we further strengthen ties with a key strategic partner in the region. In episode one, we also talked a little bit about how India had hosted the G20 summit in 2023. Uh, one of the things to come out of that summit was world leaders announcing the launch of an economic corridor between India, Europe and the Middle East. Can you tell us a little more about what this economic corridor is and what it means for the region? Yes, yes. So it is one of the several economic corridors uh, that India has launched and is engaged in. It, they have national economic corridors within the country uh, and they engaged in international economic project like the, the International North-South Transport Corridor that goes uh, through Russia. But of course, given the current situation, 
the idea is not to use Russia to arrive in the European Union. Now, the corridor would go from India through Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Israel and Greece. Uh, so it could uh, strengthen the resilience and uh, the, uh, the diversification of uh, procurement, I mean, for, of uh, trade for the European Union because it's a different entry point. At the same time, it could create challenges as we have seen now. Uh, for example, the fact that there is a war between Israel and Hamas uh, makes progress on talks about the corridor difficult between uh, Israel on one side, UAE and Saudi Arabia on the other. And bringing the focus back to the EU and India, since uh, these two large economic blocs have been strengthening ties uh, for the last few years, do you think that there's anything that could derail the process of these two powers coming closer together? Uh, derail? No. I think that um, talks could slow down. I think that tie, the, the speed of strengthening the ties could not be as fast as some would wish. Um, at the same time, as uh, the Parliament has mentioned in resolutions, it's not only building ties that is important, but also the quality of those ties and the values on which those ties are based. For example, on the free trade agreement, um, we have stressed that the final uh, agreement should abide by the rules of the International Labour Organization, as well as international commitments that we have undertaken in the area of sustainable trade. Uh, so, um, derail. To, to take what you said earlier, no, but it could slow the negotiations down towards reaching that uh, final agreement. Thank you very much, Angela. Thank you, Kelly. This concludes our two-part series on the rise of India. Follow the PRS for more informative videos on the EU's most pressing topics.